everything is meant to heal us. And to bring love, to bring light where there is darkness. With greater tribulation comes greater revelation of Christ in us. If Christ is the kingdom come, as it is quoted in the Bible, if Christ is the kingdom come, let's think of that concept. Beyond the man, this beautiful man that so many worship as the savior, if Christ is the kingdom come, this kingdom, we can't touch it, we can't materialize it into 3D, but we can. If it's not just heaven after we pass through the veil and die physically, if this kingdom has already come in us, it's a spiritual kingdom. It's a multi-dimensional kingdom. If this kingdom has already come through Christ in us, who was and is and is to come, the Alpha, the Omega, beginning and the end, infinity, multi-dimensional, Christ is the continuum of this kingdom in us. Christ is this concept of heaven given to us access all the time. I came from religious doctrine that worships a book more than it worships the concepts of that book and I share from my personal experience because that is our story when we share from our personal experience it lacks projection it lacks judgment we must share from our personal experience otherwise we are still in judgment and I'm convicted of that so often It's not the beliefs that I no longer resonate with. They are foundational in me. But the doctrine that is based in judging others, projecting upon others, speaking at others, separating others, that I can no longer resonate with. They don't resonate with who God has shown me to be and where the Holy Spirit has brought me through this veil of understanding in recent years. And so much of that is falling away. And with that comes enlightenment, awakening, eye-opening experiences in the spiritual path, um, in my own spiritual path, where I feel repentance flowing and I'm turning away from old doctrines that don't resonate with who I see God as being in me and everywhere. If God is not love, what is God? Is God judgment? Does God send us to hell? Does God condemn? When we close our eyes and we think about a word, say, red, we see it in our minds. If we think about an orange, a fruit, we can hear, see, taste, feel that orange. Our body even reacts to it, we might salivate. When we think about God, what comes to mind? What does our conscious awareness, what does our body feel when we think about God? And if it's love and it's judgment at the same time, if it's love and it's condemnation, if it's love and it's separation, then somewhere we are double-minded. Somewhere we have cognitive dissonance. There's dissonance. 
What is dissonance? It's a sound that is grating because we're all resonating. We're all creating frequencies and we're either co-creating with darkness or light. All energy is vibrating. When we realize that there's darkness, light brought into that darkness eradicates it. And that light can come in multidimensional forms. Now, the religion that I, doctrine that I came from would teach that only the light can only come in a certain manner. And if light or love was brought in a different manner, it wasn't God, it was deception. I no longer believe that. God is too big and multidimensional to be confined to a word, to a certain prayer. People experience deliverance from darkness in countless ways. We might command demons to leave, we might bring love in, we might bring service in, we might bring healing in so many different modalities. We can't confine God. And that's what my religion did. And it separated humanity. And I'm so convicted now when remnants of that separation arise in me. And so I seek not to separate myself from my Christian brothers and sisters at all. But I do feel separation because of doctrine on their part. And that probably is judgment. But I don't seek separation at all. I seek oneness through this Christ, this kingdom, this love, this light, which we will have access to. People that are awakening out of Christianity have come to see Christ as, in my words, these are my words, a continuum of the kingdom, a multi-dimensional light love of God that is present in all beings but we are just asleep to that. And whenever we are asleep to that, we are, quote, not in Christ. We are asleep. We are in our ego, which is the identification of who we are in this world. And so I came to realize that many, many tribes of people are awakening to the Christ in them, and they may articulate that or give different words to that, but it's still the same concept. It is God in humanity, bringing light to a darkness, bringing love where there is separation, bringing healing where there is pain and destruction bringing restoration and redemption where there has been transgression and sin. We can give different words to the meanings of the same thing. And we can still honor all on that path. What if we were all transcending a mountain, ascending a mountain, the mountain of God, each one climbing up a different pathway, but all ascending the same mountain of God. I don't know your path, you don't know mine, and yet we are one, all in this journey, helping one another in acts of service and kindness. And so separation doesn't resonate with me anymore. 
judgment doesn't resonate with me anymore. Division doesn't resonate with me anymore. Damnation doesn't resonate with me anymore. And there's nothing I can do to stop that because I've been pulled through a veil of understanding. I call it the power of the Holy Spirit doing that in my life. Someone may call it something else, and I respect that. I honor that. What does it mean when we read to God, even darkness is light? What does that mean? There are many tribes of people who are seeking healing in the earth right now, spiritual healing, bodily healing, healing for humanity. Prayerful, meditative. Doing the inner work. I join with these. I respect that and I honor that. I honor their paths. I can no longer segregate myself into a religion and a doctrine that worships the doctrine of a book rather than the love that unites all of us in humanity, in God. And so just naturally as God, the Holy Spirit pulled me through this veil of understanding and awakening, I began to question, I began to see deeper, I began to realize deeper revelations that were in this book. And it became the journey of my soul. It was a personal journey. And that's when judgments and damnations and condemnations and projections and separations by default just fell away. The book no longer was a weapon or a judgment out towards others, but it was a, a drawing of my own inner path into God, into love. We are embarking on a very volatile shockwave, deeply psychological, neurological family lines, generational lines, all of that being shaken at the core. We are headed for volatility that will shake us to the core. Solically, spiritually, and in our bodies, because God wants to shake our nervous systems free of the resident darkness that we have carried. Many will see the dark side of that, the shaking part of it, the fear in it, and the, the upheaval. Many will see destruction. God is giving us eyes to see that he is shaking us to the core so that we may be freed. Light is eradicating darkness, and that light comes in multidimensional forms. not in a doctrine, in my opinion, 
and in my experience, I can no longer live in one or two dimensional religion. God has come to the world. And we are at a climactic point that is going to shake our families, our homes, our bodies, our nations, the world, out there and in here. Because resident darkness must be loosed by the power of God. We avail ourselves, we bow, we wait, we quiet ourselves in wait for the shakings of God, for the shock waves of God to free us of resident darkness. It is a respectful time of inner working. It is a honorable time of waiting, meditating, not being pretentious, not shouting out at others, but of bowing, of reflecting, of praying, of meditating, of quieting our soul before the most powerful supernatural force this God, this love that eradicates darkness with light. This is what we're headed toward. May we be seeking to be found in the mind of Christ, which is a higher mind. May we seek to be found in the love of God, which is a love that surpasses knowledge and understanding. There's no earthly words for it. There's no, nothing we can write in books that could even define it, this love that surpasses knowledge. It must be experienced. It can overcome every darkness. And darkness right now is being shaken to the core. Our psyche, our minds, our bodies, our family lives, our nations and the world will be shaken and will see the shock waves of the power of God. May our eyes see in the spirit what God is doing. May we avail ourselves to that power in this hour. to heal and seal us as God shakes us free of that resident darkness, which we all embody and carry. And the understanding of that causes us to take our eyes off of judging others and turns us inward into the kingdom path and sees us one in God and in humanity for the healing of all. We quiet ourselves before you, O oh God. We wait on you. We avail ourselves to you. We bow before you. We worship you. Show us the sacrifice that you desire. because of your love for us, your great love for us that sets us free, that ascends us, transcends us and transforms us into heavenly realms to carry the kingdom as it is in heaven, so let it be on earth. Amen.